Welcome to iLectron Line. In the previous video, we used a general equation to come up with a binomial distribution so we could graph it. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to do the binomial expansion to come up with the coefficients to do graphing as well. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to come up with the number of combinations. And so since there is n trials and the probability of success and the probability of failure is equal to each other, 0.5, we can go ahead and use the binomial expansion. The number is relatively small and the probabilities are the same. And so we're going to do it for all values of success from 0 to 8. So 2 to the 8 power would be the total number of combinations in which results could come out. So since there's a 50-50 probability in each case, there's 256 combinations in which the probabilities can come out when you have 8 trials. And so then to find out the probability in each case, in each outcome, or I should be, uh, better say in the probability of each success type going from 0 through 8, we can go ahead and use the coefficients of the binomial expansion. So we start with a 1, then we break that out into two ones, then we move the ones to the side and we add these two together, one plus one is equal to two. And we continue doing that until we get all the way up to the eighth row here. So the third row, again, we bring the ones out. We add the one plus a two gives us a three, two plus one gives us a three. And that is the third case, that is when there's n equal to three trials. So we continue doing this, we bring the one out here, the one out there, so one plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four, and that's for four trials. We need to get all the way up to eight trials, of course. So one, we have five, four plus six is 10, 10, five, and one, that's for five trials. So one, six, 15, 20, 15, six, and one, that's for six trials, we're almost there, two more rows. So we have 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. That's for 7 trials. And finally, the last row, we get 1, 8. That would be 28. That would be 56. That would be 70, 56. That would be 28, 8, and 1. That would be for the 8 row. <clears throat> now, out of 256, that means 1 out of 256 would be for m equals 0. 8 out of, oh, what, what am I doing here? 256, I forgot my 5, so 256. 8 divided by 256 is for m equals 1. 28 out of 256 is for m equals 2. 56 out of 256 is for m equals 3. 70 out of 256 is for m equals 4. Then we have 56 out of 256 is for m equals 5. And again, m is the number of successes. So here we have 28 out of 256 is, e is for m equals 6. 8 out of 256 for m equals 7. And 1 out of 256 is for m equals 8. So in each case, that's the probability of occurrence to have one success uh, zero successes, one success, two successes, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, if we go ahead and we f figure out the fraction, you will find out that we can would graph it exactly the same way as we have over here. Just to make sure that we have this correct, let's try the 70 divided by 256. So 70 divided by 256, we get 0 0.2734. So 70 divided by 256 is equal to 0 0.2734. And notice that it's right in line with what we got over here. That looks just about right. And you can see that the heights of each of the columns will correspond to each of these fractions for all the different combinations of successes. And so we can go ahead and use the general equation or we can use what we call the binomial expansion methodology where we first find the total number of combinations, two to the n number of trials, and then we take the coefficients of binomial expansion to come up with the, the probabilities of all the possible cases we could possibly want. And then we can go ahead and graph it and it looks exactly the same. Now this is probably a little bit faster method than using this equation right here because that can be kind of lengthy working out with your calculator. But again, this only works if you have symmetry, in other words, when P is equal to Q. When P is not equal to Q, you could use something like this, but it becomes a lot more complicated, and then you probably just want to revert back to this equation. 
So on the next example, I'm going to show you how to graph a binomial expansion where P and Q will not be the same. And then you'll see how we go ahead and do that there. And this is how we use the binomial expansion to come up with an easier way to graph binomial expansion, or I should say a binomial distribution. And that's how we do that.